We've learned a lot about the dirty secret behind the Biden's family wealth, namely how Joe's son Hunter used his father's VP position to make millions through shady deals with foreign adversaries. And what we already know could be just the tip of the iceberg. Now Hunter's jilted former business associate, Devin Cooney, who is currently in prison, is turning against his old partner. He's given investigative journalist Matthew Tiermund and Breitbart's editor Peter Schweizer authorization to access 26,000 emails that reveal even more about the Biden family's vast operation of grift and influence peddling. Matthew Tiermund joins me now. Matthew, thank you so much uh, for joining us. But now before we get to some of the new emails uh, you'll reveal tonight, my first question is, did Mr. Cooney feel comfortable or why did he feel comfortable, I should say, coming to you with this information? Well, it was a, a somewhat circuitous route. Uh, I had a contact, uh, somebody I knew in Chicago who happened to be in the same facility uh, as Bevan Cooney, a federal uh, work camp for white collar uh, infractions. And uh, he had known what I had been involved in working with Peter Schweitzer in the past on Ukraine and Burisma and other forensic auditing projects. And he reached out to me and said, I am in uh, this facility with Bevan Cooney and Bevan wants to flip. He wants to make these things public and transparent. He's absolutely uh, apoplectic uh, that uh, Hunter and Devin Archer have skated as they have. And Bevin sees himself, and I think somewhat justly, as a bit of the fall guy. I mean, he's there in prison uh, for working with these partners, uh, and they're not. Mm, and they just, they just seem, seem to walk away, at least on this deal. Now, Matthew, uh, Archer, Devin Archer and Jason Galanis are involved in the majority of the emails you've received. Tell us who they are and how they, their relationship to Hunter Biden. I look at Devin Archer as the ringleader of uh, this whole little uh, coterie of, uh, of, of door opening lobbying types who try and move money around. Uh, Devin Archer was originally partners with uh, Chris Hines, John Kerry's stepson. Uh, and then he also went into business with Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's son. And some of these emails, you see that Hines starts to get a little bit more risk averse. Uh, and then they start to, uh, to elevate Hunter's role in the operation, and especially fitting, given that this was the start of the uh, second term of Barack Obama, when they started getting very active in uh, Eastern Central Europe, in China, uh, in Kazakhstan. And here's one of the alleged 2013 uh, email exchanges that you obtained between, again, Devin Archer and Jason Galanis. Okay, Archer writes, it won't make a difference on economics other than we bring Hunter into the mix a little, uh, a little, but without a comp commitment. I want to leverage Hunter more, and he's a good guy for us to include. Well, Matthew, from all you've had access to, did Hunter object to being used in this way? Or is that just, that was his value? Yeah, no, that was certainly his value. One of the uh, glaring things that Peter and I saw in these email strings is Hunter CC'd a lot, but he doesn't engage very actively. He doesn't uh, have a lot of strategic vision, business acumen. Uh, he networks and then brings them uh, clients and partners and investors. And he brought them, apparently, what looks to be a very big one with a uh, Russian oligarch. And it was obviously Hunter that made that happen. And, Matthew, we, we already know that the wife of the former mayor of Moscow wired $3.5 to Hunter's company. But then you found an email exchange that describes how she was able to do it without any red flags coming up. Now, the email, this, is, this email was sent by the chairman of a brokerage company to Archer, Devin Archer, in 2014. The quote, they said that she, Yelena Batorina, is on their watch list, but the fact that there have been no convictions, et cetera. They have approved her. But then Jason Galanis made it clear that this approval uh, was unethical at best. He writes, leave the back door open and we'll sneak right in. We weaseled a JP Morgan account for the woman's USSR shot put champion. Matthew, what is this? And what's Hunter's connection? 
Well, they sound like a bunch of frat boys on a trading right. desk, not the uh, the white glove bankers you would think that the uh, richest woman in Russia exiled in London, and at that time the third richest woman in the world, would utilize to get her banked in the U.S. So amidst what was going on, you saw instability in Ukraine, and there was a lot of Russian money trying to get out of Europe, Central Europe, especially Russia and Ukraine, and she wanted a J.P. Morgan bank account and, and a brokerage account, and to transact business with their partners partner securities firm, Burnham Securities, she needed to get J.P. Morgan's approval. And she was on a watch list. Uh, OFAC, the uh, Office of Foreign Asset Control, run by the Treasury in conjunction with State Department, uh, watches all of these uh, crony oligarchs and potential criminals around the world. And her company, a construction company, she was the wife of the Moscow mayor, and she made her money in construction. Uh, and the State Department was well aware of her Russian mob ties. Uh, so she was on an associated entity watch list uh, because her company had a huge stake owned by Putin's bank, Spurbank, is known as the, uh, the Bank of Putin in the Kremlin. So it actually took them a few more weeks than they thought to get this J.P. Morgan account open. Uh, and they even uh, talked mm. about going to Morgan Stanley, to Bank of California. They eventually got it open. And for them, that was a big coup. And there's a lot of email yeah. traffic about, you know, partying and, uh, you know, look at, look at how we snuck in the back door on this one. So they knew what they were doing. Unbelievable. Matthew, thank you. Come back when you have more uh, of these emails or new information to share, please. And here to react to what we just heard, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. He's the author of the book, One Vote Away. Senator, I want to get to social media.